So recently, Limited Run Games announced that they are reprinting Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back for the Nintendo Game Boy. In addition to, I think, The Empire Strikes Back for the NES and Star Wars Shadows of the Empire for the N64. I thought it was pretty interesting that they were reprinting this game for the Game Boy. Because I don't think it's a very good game. I don't think anybody is particularly fond of it. And it's also interesting because it seems like the intellectual property rights to this would be pretty hard to acquire, given that it's now owned by Disney and passed hands through multiple different people. But nonetheless, I was pretty intrigued by that. And I was also pretty curious to see what kind of hardware a limited run games would be using for their reprint. I'll have more to say on that a little bit later, but I wanted to start off by buying an original copy of the game. And to my surprise, I found that... It actually was released twice for the Game Boy. There were kind of two different prints of it. First, it was released by Capcom. And then later, it seems like Ubisoft re-released it. So I picked up a copy of both of these on eBay. They were both pretty cheap. It seems like the Capcom version is fairly rare. Uh, the one I got actually came with a manual that I haven't looked at yet. I didn't bother to buy a copy of the Ubisoft uh, version with the manual. But... I, uh, I haven't played these games, I'm not familiar with this game really at all, but I wanted to just uh, do a little side-by-side -side comparison to see if there's any differences, and then maybe when the limited run games uh, edition comes out, we can look at that one as well. So I think what I'll do is I'll start off by taking these both apart and comparing them just physically to see if there's any differences. The only difference I can see from the outside is on the Capcom version, obviously it says Capcom at the top instead of Ubisoft. And the name, or I guess the cartridge serial number, is DMG EB USA. And this one is DMG EB USA 1, which that USA 1, um, that's what leads me to believe that the Ubisoft was a later revision. You can also just notice the positioning of the text on the front label is slightly different. The Ubisoft version has the text closer together towards the center of the label. And the Capcom version has it closer to the outside. But other than that, all the symbols, uh, licensed by Nintendo, seal of quality, official game pack, all of that seems about the same. The Ubisoft version I got is in fair condition, I would say, while the Capcom version is in near mint condition. So let's go ahead and open these up and uh, look at the circuit boards inside and see if we can see any differences. Alright, so I got these uh, both pulled apart. I did that off camera since I don't have a tripod. Here on the left we have the Capcom circuit board and here on the right we have the Ubisoft version. They seem mostly the same. I did actually write that U on there in Sharpie just so I could keep track and wouldn't forget which one was which. I think that they're, they're both just standard NBC1 games, 128 kilobyte ROM. I think that the Ubisoft version is a slightly later revision board. You can see uh, it's DMG Bean. 10, while the Capcom version up at the top right is labeled DMG Bean 02. And then also, it's a slightly different revision of the NBC1, it looks like. NBC, they're both NBC1Bs. It's a little bit different of a mask ROM. It looks like that's a sharp part and this is standard micro. Also, the capacitors here, those look like resistors but they're actually uh, just radial lead capacitors. Uh, there are through hole part that's kind of uh, surface mount soldered, while this later revision has standard, looks like 0805 chip capacitors. In fact, it looks like, oh, it has one there and then one down there, while this has both of them at the top. But other than that, the circuit board is very much, uh, very similar. Even like the routing looks pretty close. But I certainly think that the Ubisoft version is a later revision, so uh, I think that kind of confirms that suspicion. Let's go ahead and boot them up in a Game Boy and see if we can see any visual differences. So for this test, I'll start off with the Capcom version. I've got it loaded into my Game Boy Color, and this has a backlit screen mod. So let's just power it on, see if we can see anything.
I'm not sure if that's the same prelude text as the movie has. I don't know. So, here we are. I don't know how to play this game. Right? But in the Ubisoft version... I did notice on that intro credit sequence, it says that the conversion was done by Ubisoft, but it was published by Capcom. So I'm curious to see what this version will say. Oh, I need to clean it. Okay. Alright, I got that cleaned. It didn't seem to be very dirty, so let's see if it's going to work this time. So it says Ubisoft Presents, whereas I think the Capcom version said Capcom Presents. As far as I can tell, that's the only difference so far. Let's see if I can skip over this. I mean, the game looks like it's just... Holy smokes. Okay. So I think the thing I'll do next is we we know that at least the title screen is slightly different. So let's go ahead and dump the ROMs. Let's do a binary diff on the data and see if there's anything else different. All right, I've got the games loaded into my cart dumper. So first of all, let's just read the header information. Game title, Empire Strikes, ROM plus MBC1, 128K ROM, zero RAM. 6FA8 for the checksum. Okay, let's go ahead and dump it. I'm going to go put it in my ROMs directory and I'll name it. This is the Capcom version, so I'll say Empire, oops, Empire Capcom. Okay, it's finished. Okay, let's dump the Ubisoft version now. Again, I'll read the card header. Empire Strikes, ROM plus MBC1, 128k ROM, 0 kill by ROM, RAM. Checksum is different, which you'd expect because the data in the cart is different. The checksum doesn't actually matter. The Game Boy doesn't use it at all. It was probably just used for Nintendo's internal quality control, most likely. But let's go ahead and read it. And I'll say Empire Ubisoft. Cool. We've got both of those dumped. Let's uh, open them up in an emulator just to make sure that they work. Okay, so this one works. Let's go ahead and open the Capcom version now. That one works as well. So this title screen is quite a bit different. Let's look at that close, uh, more closely later. Okay, so I've got both files opened in a uh, in hex fiend, which can do a binary diff of the data. And on the left here we have the Ubisoft version, and on the right we have the Capcom version. So this is just showing us where data is different. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe that this part is still within the header, and I would guess that this is actually the checksum. And this is probably, maybe it's part of the checksum as well. Um, so that's pretty normal. Let's keep going. Slight differences there, there. Slight differences. Okay, so here's quite a bit. This data is quite a bit different down here. You can see on the Capcom version, 
there's quite a bit missing and my guess is that this is that intro screen text because the the Capcom version has quite a bit more text on that intro screen than the Ubisoft version did. So that's my guess. We can look at that a little bit more closely later. Yeah, 29 byte difference, 13 byte difference. And really, that's actually all the differences, so it's not very far into the ROM. Oh, sorry, that was all, that one's all the way at the bottom, but... Again, uh, I'm not sure what that could be, but let's take a little bit closer look. So here I have it pulled up in Hexfiend, both ROMs, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through here, and a lot of times that title screen text and the intro screen text is stored more or less like in plain text that we can read. So let's see, I'm just going to search this file for the text Capcom, and look at that. This is exactly where that data was at the bottom. Uh, let's see, we're at byte offset 123,000. And if you look here, let's see, yeah, that's about... That's exactly where that is. So you can see, let's go find this in this version now, the Ubisoft version. I'll search for Ubi. Uh, I think it has to be. So yeah, we can see exactly The Empire Strikes Back, 1992, licensed by Ubisoft, converted by NMS. So this is the title screen. Licensed by Nintendo, Capcom Presents. Cool, let's pull it up in the emulator one more time. I'm gonna restart it. Capcom Presents. And I think the Ubisoft version says Ubisoft Presents. Ubisoft Presents. So I want to see if I can find where that data is and maybe we can change it. Hmm. Let's see if I can find this Capcom. It only showed up in the one place. Capcom present. Where is that in this version? Oh, there it is right there, Ubisoft. So here, if I take this, how many bytes is that? Nine. And I look here, how many bytes is this? Five, six. So just for fun, let's just change this and say Ubi. We'll edit it to be that. I'll come here and I'll say file save as and I'll say Empire Ubisoft hack. Let's pull that up in an emulator. There we go. Ubisoft. So really it looks like the differences between the two games are very trivial and very minor. Not a whole lot, not a whole lot of differences between the two, um, which is pretty interesting. So it must just be that Ubisoft got the license, Capcom published it, and then later on Ubisoft just decided to publish it on their own. 
Just one last time, let's look at both versions. Whoops, why did I go so big? It says it's 1992 on the Ubisoft version and on the Capcom version. Still says it's 1992. So they didn't change the publish date. They kind of just eradicated all mention of Capcom from the game. So one thing I did want to talk about is this limited run games announcement. And I was on my t uh, Twitter the other day talking about this when I noticed it. Yeah, like I said, I bought a couple copies of the game just to kind of tear it down and kind of see how it works. You can see here's a, just a screenshot of that, that page. You can see it's very similar to the, uh, the official releases, except for they changed that logo to say Lucasfilm now. They added limited run instead of the Nintendo seal of quality. And then they added limited run entertainment system, I guess, instead of where the Nintendo logo would normally be. Um, interesting that they're claiming that it's made in the United States, because most likely the, it'll actually be produced in China. And then they also changed the serial number from DMGEBUSA to LRGUSA-01. So... That's a little bit interesting, but the really, really interesting thing here is notice this circuit board that we can see behind this transparent shell. I mean, first of all, the shell itself, instead of where it would say Nintendo Game Boy here, it says limited run games, which leads me to believe that they're going to have a custom injection molded process to make these games. The other interesting thing is how it's transparent. We can see the circuit board behind it. And this is what I found uh, really interesting is you can notice here, there's a big battery. If you've ever, you know, replaced a battery in your Pokemon games, you'll, you'll be pretty familiar with that. You can also see up here, um, this is a real-time clock chip. Here's a little chip that kind of helps manage the battery-backed SRAM. We can't see anything but beneath the label. But what's really interesting is we can actually make out the uh, serial number of the cartridge, or the PCB revision. So, from my eyes, I can read, it kind of looks to me like DKD, KF, QN-10, maybe. It's hard to make it out. But, as we looked at the circuit boards of these official games before, this game doesn't have any SRAM. So, there'd be no reason for the circuit board uh, to have a battery, or for that matter, a real-time clock. Um, additionally, we can tell that this is actually a, a photo of the uh, some some kind of an original Nintendo game and they did a little bit more research on it again this is what the actual release uh, circuit board looks like there's no battery there's no SRAM so here's a picture I found of a Game Boy circuit board and ignore the pretty terrible soldering job on that battery replacement but if we compare that to this let's look at that serial number again DKG KFDN Oh DMG KGDU-10 I am 95% sure that they just took a photo of a of a actual this is a Pokemon gold or silver cartridge circuit board This is the circuit board that they use in their promotional photo um, what's kind of interesting to me is it looks cool with this transparent shell because you can, you know, the circuit board takes up the whole shell. But the official circuit board, it doesn't need to be that big and it wasn't originally. Um, it only took up maybe two thirds of the shell. So really anything b b uh, above this kind of label would just be empty. And in my opinion would look kind of silly if this circuit board didn't take up the full space. So, I don't know why um, they, I mean, they probably just grabbed a Game Boy circuit board, but it leads me to believe that they have no idea what the uh, final circuit board is going to be like. They claim that it's going to ship, when do they say? Shipping is planned to begin late October. So, they've got a, a couple months for them to work on this. But the really interesting thing I'm, I'm really eager for is, you know, this this is a mask ROM, but you can just use a regular EEPROM and basically do the same same process. However, this chip, the MBC-1, 
this was a custom Nintendo integrated circuit. This is not an off-the-shelf part. This is something Nintendo designed and fabricated themselves. You can't buy these. And so what you have to do if you want to publish a game like this is you have to do what's called like an implementation of this chip or design some chip that can replicate what this chip does. And all this chip does is natively the Game Boy can only address up to 32 kilobytes of ROM. Like we looked at before, Empire Strikes Back is a 128 kilobyte ROM. So in order to access, you know, that extra 100 kilobytes of data, you need to use what uh, this chip, and it's essentially a mapper, and you can write data into it, and it'll allow you to select different banks of the EEPROM and load that in into different 32 kilobyte chunks. So one thing I talked about is somebody's actually obviously reverse engineered that MBC1 chip at custom Nintendo IC and you can actually implement it in what's called discrete logic so that's that means like off-the-shelf 7.4 series logic chips so in this case we've got a bunch of AND gates here uh, we've got a NAND or uh, sorry an X, uh, XNOR XNOR you got a NAND there a bunch of OR gates so in my opinion you could implement the MBC1 in probably four or five off-the-shelf, you know, cheap, you know, each one of these chips is going to cost, you know, a couple of pennies. You can implement the MBC1 logic in off-the-shelf components. You don't really need a custom IC. Obviously, using it is going to save you a little bit of space. And then, uh, you know, any kind of off-the-shelf EEPROM as well. So, on my site, you know, I actually have a a 32 kilobyte ROM cartridge that you can use to flash whatever game on. Uh, obviously, this is only 32 kilobytes, so Empire Strikes Back won't run on it. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about, where really there's not that uh, complicated logic, and you can see how tiny this board is. So this would be, like, Nintendo released only a few 32 kilobyte ROMs, but one of them was Tetris, so... Uh, an official Tetris board would be a similar size to this and similar as far as, you know, component count and logic that way. So I'm really curious to see what the actual circuit board that Retrobit is designing and will be supplying. I'm curious to see if they're using 5-volt tolerant uh, components. It's hard to get 5-volt tolerant flash chips these days. However, 128 kilobytes is pretty small, and you can, they, the 128 kilobyte chips are still available uh, pretty, pretty easily. So, I wouldn't expect them to have to do anything crazy with level shifting or using 3.3 volt chips. Um, I'm just really curious to see how they implement that MBC1 logic and what their plan is there. So... Uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video on this as soon as I actually get my hands on the official cartridge, but I'm really eager to see how they did it and what it's going to look like. I'm also really curious to know why they would have, why they would release this game. It's not a good game. It's not very fun. It's not particularly noteworthy in any way. If you got this game for Christmas, you'd probably be pretty disappointed other than the fact that it's a Star Wars game. So I think that about wraps up the quick comparison between the two versions of The Empire Strikes Back for the Nintendo Game Boy. As we can see, the differences between the two are very minimal, and the changes that were actually added are fairly trivial for anybody with a hex editor to add on their own. So I'm really curious to see when the limited run games version comes out, um, you know, which one it will be more like, first of all. I would assume the Ubisoft version. And also it'll be interesting to see if they change, you know, some of that title screen text, like instead of presented by Ubisoft, maybe it'll say presented by Limited Run Games. So, I think that wraps it up. Let me know if you have any questions about this, or if you have any other ideas of things you want to see. But, till then, I'll see you next time.